Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 4th, and it is a beautiful sunny winter day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Mild temperatures in the 40s, sunshine, couldn't ask for a better day this time of year. Uh, and got an extra member of the audience today, we'll get into that later. But uh, let's get into pipes and such. So. I have here my uh, Tim Hynek, uh, beautiful pipe, love the movable ring here and beautiful rustication on this. This is a pipe I bought years ago at uh, the New York Pipe Show. Uh, got to got to meet Tim and talk to him a bit about his pipes and yeah, good experience, good pipe. I don't smoke it very often and maybe I'll explain why I'm smoking it today. Uh, but today's tobacco. This is the tobacco of the week from two weeks ago, Friday, uh, because this past Friday we did not have a live stream. Uh, this is uh, Peter Heinrich Reserve Crew Number Two, and this was sent to me by my buddy Phil Rivera. It's the third of the three tobaccos he sent. Uh, this one is very interesting, and and I'm enjoying it greatly. So I've had two bowls of this so far. And I, I jarred it up and I actually rehydrated it a bit because I, it dried out uh, in the baggie. That was my fault. I should have should have jarred it up uh, more quickly. But it's uh, very good stuff. So let me get some loaded up. I'll talk to you a bit about this tobacco, what I know about it, and uh, give you some impressions. But it is a, uh, it's a nice flake. The flake is broken up quite a bit because it did dry out and then rehydrate. But... Um, and I have had no issues with the burning. Of course, this is the first time I'm smoking it post rehydration, so I'll probably be relighting it a thousand times just because that's my luck and not because the tobacco would call for it. So I am just kind of balling it up in my fingers, rubbing it out a bit as I go and, and stuffing it in. And that's usually how I deal with flakes. I don't often rub them out in a tray or something like that. I've been doing it lately on Friday nights just because I don't want to have issues with it. And occasionally doing this, I will get, you know, the odd uh, tobacco that requires an awful lot of relighting. But for the most part, this works for me. And I'm using the typical three-point method, you know, pack. Pack like a boy, pack like a woman, pack like a man. That's how I was taught it. Sorry, boys and gals. <laughs> All right, here's the third little ball that I'm putting in there. And if I had some sort of dry kindling bits, I'd put it on top, but I don't. So I just sort of rub my finger around the top to make sure that top bit is really well sort of distributed and rubbed out. Okie doke. So i got about two bowls of this left, and I will enjoy those greatly, as, as you'll see. Okay, so let's get this lit up, and I'll tell you more about it. So this is a very much Virginia forward blend. And it is a German aromatic. So Peter Heinrich is a shop in Germany. I don't know who actually produces and distributes their tobaccos, but they are a shop. And probably should have looked this up before I started the video. Well, what the heck, I'll... It won't take long to pull this up. Compelling video here, isn't it? As, as I look up the blend. Um, so this is actually, I might have misnamed this. The name of this is Peter Heinrich. No. <laughs> That's the wrong tobacco. That's interesting. I wonder why I didn't. Well, you know what? We might we might have to. Hang with me, folks. I've almost got it. 
There we go. So it's Peter Heinrich Reserve Crew Number Two, which is what I think I said. I said. And this is a pressed long cut flake of pure Virginia composition, which explains why it's Virginia forward. Now, according to tobacco reviews, it is flavored with hints of vanilla, honey, and orange. And that's interesting. We'll get we'll get to why. So it's blended by Peter Heinrich, manufactured by Kohlhaas and Kopp. Uh, so it's a cane K blend. And so Tobacco Review says that it's honey, um, orange, and what was the other thing that was in there? Vanilla. And when I first opened the little baggie and smelled it, and you know, if I smell this jar now, I got this really familiar smell that I couldn't quite place until somebody on the live stream said orange. And then I, it clicked for me. It smells like an orange creamsicle. And the taste I get is very definitely a vanilla marmalade kind of flavor. But according to Phil, that is completely inconsistent with what's on the tin. And he's got this straight out of the tin. The tin claims it is, and I may be forgetting what Phil said, but I think he said it was passion fruit and strawberry. Now, if I try to forget about orange and vanilla and think passion fruit and strawberry, maybe. I don't know. I like thinking of it as orange and vanilla because <laughs> I just enjoy those flavors more. But what I can tell you is that this is it's it's lightly topped in that the tobacco is coming through very clearly. You know, this is definitely a Virginia tobacco. But as is often the case with the higher quality German aromatics, the topping is natural flavor, so I'm not getting chemical taste at all, and it's consistent throughout the bowl. Uh, might be a little bit stronger on the first light, but as you go down the bowl, this flavor is is there. You know, it, it doesn't burn off. And I really like that. It reminds me of um, one of the few aromatics that I that I enjoy, which is uh, Dan Tobacco's uh, Vanilla Honeydew. Again, natural flavoring, consistent throughout the bowl. Uh, and the other one that I put on that list is uh, Cornell and Deal Autumn Evening. And I know it's got its detractors, but to me, that is a great blend because if you want an aromatic, because it's consistent throughout the bowl. And it tastes like what it's supposed to. It doesn't taste like a chemical uh, chemistry set went off in your mouth. Anybody even know what a chemistry set is? So as you saw from the from the title card, <laughs> sorry, I do have a member of the audience here. Uh, having a cricket problem. So I came down the shop last night. I've been I've been getting some work done down here. The um, the wall that I need to paint. I got all the equipment moved away from it. I got it cleaned. I've patched all the the cracks and some holes where I had things mounted and stuff. Now I just have to scrape some of that patch stuff uh, just to even up some rough spots and then clean the wall one more time, and then I can paint it. So. Might be getting a coat of paint on later today. We'll see. Now, I don't know if this happened because I've been moving stuff around down here and making a ruckus or, or what, but I came down last night to um, watch some, some TV while my 
wife was in Hallmark, Kevin. Uh, what did I watch last night? Svengulli had Revenge of the Creature, the Creature from the Luck, Goon, Part 2. Great movie. I watched something. Uh, I can't remember now. It was so good, I can't remember. Anyway. Come down here. Lights come on. I'm walking over to this corner, which is where I got it. And sitting under my desk is what I at first thought was a giant house spider. Now, if you watch me long enough, you know I don't like spiders. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to go running and screaming from the room or anything. I know they're not going to hurt me, you know, but there's just something about the legs and all that. It just gives me the creeps, and I don't like them. So I've done different things over the years. I got these spider away packs that uh, that actually work quite well. I've got one right here. Come on, spider away pack. I highly recommend these if you have any spider problems. So, uh, and you have to replace them. I don't know every six months or something, but they work. I have a problem. It's and a lot of you guys are going to think I'm a nitwit for this, but I just have this thing where I don't like to kill stuff. You know, I've got unless I have to. So I've got no problem, you know, fishing and catching a fish and killing it to eat it. Uh, although most of the time I let them go because I don't need that fish. You know, I don't need to eat that fish. Uh, if I was a hunter, I would certainly hunt for meat and, and have no issue with that at all. And I'm, I've got no problem with, you know, buying meat at the grocery store and whatnot. But I'm the kind of guy that will catch a house fly or a moth or something like that and let it go outside. I just... It's not that insect's fault, but it's in my way and in my house, and I feel like it's not really my place to end the life of that thing. And I know it's just a bug, and I, I, yeah, I get it, but I don't know. In my job, uh, well, in my early days, my, my research days, I did a lot of research on uh, rodents and rats and mice. And, you know, it was important work, and it had to be done. It was important to uh, benefit humanity, develop new drugs, that sort of thing. So I, I have no moral issue with it, no ethical issue, but I didn't like killing them, you know. It wasn't my favorite thing to do, and I had to do a lot of it, and I just kind of feel like I've, I've got to maintain this karmic balance, I guess. So I don't like killing things unnecessarily. That's, that's the bottom line, and I don't like squishing spiders so I buy the spider away and it chases them out and that's good um, but this thing right there it is a greenhouse camelback cricket I've never seen one of these before turns out they're actually becoming very common in uh, North, northern United States. They're an invasive species. They're Asian, of course. Uh, they're huge. That picture on the on in the title card is not my hand. I would not do that. But uh, that's a real picture of one of these things that gives you an idea of how big it is. Um, and I'll probably get sued by the person that took it. But uh, yeah, it's gigantic, and it's sitting there, and it's looking at me, and. The weird thing about, so last night I come down and I see it and I, you know, crickets, I've dealt with crickets before. It's, you approach a cricket, it runs away really fast. So I walked up to it and I kind of like stomped in front of it and it scuttered away. And I, you know, could still see where it was and I stomped again and it scuttered away and it went into the distance and I said, okay, I'll never see that again. I come down this morning and there it is. Same place, under the desk. I don't want it under the desk. That's where my feet go. <laughs> I cannot sit at this desk and work if there's a giant, ugly, long-legged, spidery-looking cricket <laughs> sitting right next to my foot. So, okay. So I go and I get the push broom. And I start push brooming it. And it's we've got French drains around the foundation 
and it scutters down into the French drain. Fantastic. I go put the push move away, I come back, it's sitting under the desk. Okay. So I stomp at it, and I learned something interesting about these, and, you know, as I, as I researched them, I discovered more and more about them. Um, one of the quirks of these greenhouse camelback crickets, apparently it's a defense mechanism. If you attack them, they jump at you. <laughs> they don't run away, they jump towards you. But it moved. So <laughs> now I got this giant, ugly insect that if I poke at it, it jumps at me. Yeah. These are becoming more common. I might have to move. I might have to move. I'm not sure. Either that or I might have to shrug off my Buddhist uh, nature and get myself a can of Raid. I don't know. Or some of that diatomaceous earth would be better. Yeah. So that's my, that's my cricket story. This thing's really creeping me out. We have to reach some state of detente before I have to work down here again. You know, if I have to actually do my day job down here, I cannot be constantly checking. Anyway, that's probably far more than you wanted to hear about crickets. Beyond the cricket, life is good. Had a nice weekend. Uh, spent some time with the missus and had some some fun stuff. Um, Nothing terribly exciting. Went out to dinner and that sort of thing. Watched a couple movies. Watched a truly laughable um, Hallmark-esque movie. It wasn't a Hallmark movie, but it was made in that style. And oh boy, was it bad. This poor woman. She was. She was not unattractive, but kind of be kind to her. She was pear-shaped, okay? And they dressed her in some of the most unflattering things that really accentuated the fact that she had a a very large caboose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was the first term that came to mind. So yeah, that, that, that was a thing. Uh, but we had fun watching that and, and we laughed at the whole thing. You know, that, that's the beauty of those movies sometimes. It, as much as I dislike when she seriously watches them, occasionally there'll be one on that's just goofy enough that we can both laugh at it and, and that's fun. And she watched um, Revenge of the Creature with me last night, and about the first hour of it or so. She doesn't normally stick around for Spengoolie, depending on the movie. Easily creeped out. Not that I have that problem. Ah, uh, yeah. So, rest of today, uh, maybe work on that wall, maybe not, I don't know. We'll see how the day goes. Uh, gonna finish up the Peter Heinrich and drink some more coffee, get this video up to, to YouTube so that y'all can enjoy my terror of the cricket. And uh, yeah, we'll see what else happens today. Back to work tomorrow, so life goes on. Anyway, I hope y'all have a, had a fantastic Sunday, or having a fantastic Sunday. Looking forward to the week ahead. And until we speak again, oh, and one more thing. Thank you again, Phil. I'm really enjoying the tobacco. So until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.